the 1920s. America was a nation at peace. Tennis and golf filled our increasing leisure time. The great hitter ruled at home plate. Popular culture embraced new amusements, new heroes. It was the jazz age. F. Scott Fitzgerald, the great Gatsby, and so forth and so on, it epitomized what was going on. The sky was the limit. This was the age of the speakeasy, of, of the flappers um, drinking cocktails, of the motor car, of the fast life, the loose life. Like today's internet, the 20s had a new technology, the radio and a new high-tech company, Radio Corporation of America. Business spoke confidently of the radio age. There was a very, very strong feeling in the 1920s that history had turned a corner and would never go back, uh, that the, the, the boom and bust cycle, the crashes and, and panics were things of the, the past. It was a roaring market. The great bull of the 20s was loose, and investors were eager to own common stocks. Listen, you want a tip? Get yourself some American tin. I made 50 bucks on it yesterday. You can't lose. And then on Black Thursday, October 24th, 1929, with spectacular suddenness, the world came crashing down. They called it the break, or the panic, or the crash. It was perhaps the greatest American financial calamity of the 20th century, still as vivid in historical memory as Pearl Harbor. In the popular imagination, it is inseparable from the Great Depression. And whenever we find ourselves contemplating financial prosperity or financial peril, we reach back to that period and compare it with our own. Hi, I'm Jim Grant. For the next two hours, we'll be returning to a time when it seemed everyone was embracing new technologies and worshiping new economic ideas, and most of all, buying common stocks. We'll talk to people who are there both for the boom and the bust, as well as to those who study that period for the nagging questions it raises about our own.